Welcome back, folks. We'll see how this works out, but man, I am pumped for this week because after this week is over, I expect a major bull movement next week. For those who've been asking, I'm going to give you the idea of where I see things going. I'm excited about it. Yes, I thought this week would be a consolidation, maybe even a slight red after two good weeks. And then after that, the weeks build up to that momentous occasion. We'll call it, hey, it's almost Christmas. We haven't even eaten a turkey yet, Mo. I know. I know. I love Thanksgiving. Family, I don't know about you. Is there a better holiday than Thanksgiving? Let's talk about this. I got a lot of stuff. We're going to pull out the portfolios on this one, and we're going to talk about a few other stocks and a couple other things. But before I do, let me ask you this. Is there a better holiday than Thanksgiving? And I, Everybody who knows me personally knows that Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday of the year. Why? Because it's the one holiday we all come together and there's no gifts. You don't have to go out and buy, buy, buy. There's no marketing. It's turkey, man. We sit down, we have a meal, we share what we're thankful for, and we just enjoy it. Now, the downside is when we get that muskrat souffle, the possum pot pie that old Uncle Jay Pal likes to bring when we invite him. He's always that crazy relative that just doesn't get it. And of course, everybody has one of them in their family. But with that being said, all joking aside, very good holiday. Let me know down below, what's your favorite holiday? Is it Christmas? Is it because you love giving gifts, getting gifts? Is it the Christmas spirit, all the movies? Because I do love that, it's a close second. But my favorite all-time holiday, oh man, I don't think anything beats, anything can beat Thanksgiving because everybody comes together, there's football, we got food, everybody's tired, we're just sitting around laughing, enjoying, and to me, that is the world. So put down in the comments, what's your favorite holiday? Or you can answer me this, uh, what's your favorite part of the meal on Thanksgiving? I will let you know, for me, it is mashed potatoes, and that sweet, sweet turkey gravy with a lot of salt. Man, I get doubles on that, if not triples, every year. And to me, I don't think it gets any better than that. So I, I wanted to start out this video with that. Answer those questions down below. Uh, I'm, always cons I'm always curious to see if I'm out there or, uh, by myself or not. Now, if you haven't done it, I'm doing a live stream over at the Stock Squad today at, at 2.15. I'm going to be doing 1.15 here on YouTube, 2.15 over at the Stock Squad. It's going to be private, so if you're a member over there, you will see that link over in the live stream channel in the Discord. Sign up today before we get started. You can sign up for the Stock Mo Patreon. I'll be doing that as well, most likely tomorrow, but if not tomorrow, it's going to be Thursday or Friday. I try to do it twice a week now, and we got other big news. Like I said, big news coming, big news coming, could be coming later this afternoon. We'll talk about that down the road. All right, folks, what do we got here? I want to start with this. Let's... Let's take a look at this. This is the VOO Weekly. For those who've been following me, look how many years we've been on here. Now, I started this years after I started YouTube. This is January 3rd, 2022. We're talking almost two years ago. I've been putting $100 a, uh, a weekend to VOO. Look how much we're up. 8.13% over two years uh, and $773. Now, I'm not going to complain. It's only averaging about 4% a year. Not even if you actually do the compounding. It, it's just a little, it's around 4%. It's around 4%. And you can see if I put all my money in day one, I'd still be down 7.48. So the power of compounding is there. And it's a good sign. But I did want to put in the weekly crypto as well. I always told you this would be first or it would be last. And it's been both many times. It, it, it seesaws more than some of the minute charts on the SPY when we're day trading. This thing's all over the place. But right now, good news. 17.63% up, $1,730. And I know I ain't got this one staked. You can imagine if I had this staked, we'd be up another probably 4, 5, 6%, which I don't have a stake, but we're at 2,041 on the Ethereum. And remember, I started at zero putting $100 a weekend, I'm up to 5.65 Ethereum, putting $100 a weekend. So my goal for anybody that does this would be to get up to 100 Ethereum and then get Ethereum up to 10,000 a piece and then you would become a crypto millionaire. And it is possible because you can say, well, $100 a month got us to here in under two years. And of course, if we times that out, that'd be almost 35 years. But if you put $100 a month in, and we could get up to the 20 or up to 100 and we could get that up to 10,000 which i think it'll go way over that you could become a crypto millionaire in your lifetime just putting 100 dollars a weekend 
Now, if you wanted to make this quicker, $200 a week, we'd have 11 already, oh, about nine, uh, about 11% of the ways there. In other words, we could get it done in under 20 years, putting 200 in. If you could put 400 in, obviously we'd be at, what do we be at? Almost 20 something. So we'd be one fifth of the ways there. And then you could do that in under 10 years. And so it's a question of how much money you possibly could do this if it worked out and everything else. And if you stake it, you don't even need that much because the staking actually compounds it and helps you grow it. So you don't have to, uh, it won't take as long. But I did want to point this out. It works, it works. I've been saying this for a long time, it works. Uh, if we start out day one, I'd still be down 45% if I put all my money in, but I, I dollar cost average. Now we're up to $11,541 worth of Ethereum and other crypto. So very cool stuff. All right, folks. So we are looking at a lot of different things. And I want to come out here, pull up the finance and tell you where I see things going and get, get into this because we reviewed the portfolios. A lot of things happening out there. Holidays are coming up. Everybody's just like, the markets are going to drop. Mo. The markets are going to drop. Listen. So what usually happens, and there's no guarantee it does, but we two out of three times in the last couple of years here, you can see we get to that November 15th. By the end of the year, we are higher, 3.67. This one as well. If we get to the November 19th, go to the end of December, 1.45. Not every, not every year, but if we go to November 13th, look at this. By the time we get to the end of the year, we're up 4.77. So one, two, three years in a row, but last year, they made a liar out of us. We go here, we go to the end of the year, and we are down 3%. So that last year, we did not get that huge run from November to that, but the last three years we did. And I am in the boat that this year will be like the other three years where we will see the markets running up. And I do believe it'll be a good amount. I think it'll be around two to 4% up from current levels. And that would push us up to some nice levels here. The highs being 47.66. That would take us about five, six, seven. We're not going to go up that much by the end of the year, I wouldn't think. But we could have a good push. And we can go up about eh, 3%. 120 to 150 points would not be out of the ballpark here. And that could put us up to about 45, 30, 45.50-ish. And that's where I think we will end up at the end of the year. But then after that, we get the pressure. We get the pressure of the margins and the profits and the... The leading economic indicators, the decline in manufacturing, the the, un, the unemployment numbers getting worse. All these things kick in. And what you know is history usually tells us around November 2020, around the 20th, 21st, we get a good week. And to the end of the year, that last week of December is usually good as well. Not every time, but usually good. So I'm playing both of those. But we have a chance of a major shutdown in D.C. And if that happens, that affects the markets. Now, listen, we already have a risk of a recession. Everybody can admit that we have a risk of a recession. I am in the boat it's going to happen. Others are in the boat that it's not going to happen. I don't want to see it happen. But the problem is you go ahead and have the, the Fed tightening more and more and more. Banks are cutting back on lending. Go out and try to get a loan. If you have experience of trying to get a loan out there, it did not work out like you thought it would because you have good credit and everything else. And they just turn you down. You're not alone. It happened to me for one of the loans. I have over an 800 credit score. And so it happened to one of my buddies as well. He was going for one. He got turned down. He added like an 800 credit score. We were just both laughing about it because uh, we did eventually get the loans we wanted. But it was a sign of things to come. Credit's going to get harder to get, even with good credit, because banks are scrambling to make sh to shore up their books and to make sure they can survive any potential probabilities moving forward. And before you think I'm just crazy, you're out there, Mo. Yeah, everything's hunky-dory. Then ask yourself this. Why would Warren Buffett be stashing in the cash if he thought the markets were going to go higher? Why does he continue, continue to load up on short-term treasuries? Why is he T-billing and chilling all the way to the bank? No, it's not just because you can get 5%. Warren Buffett didn't become Warren Buffett because he can get 5% basically risk-free on his money. You don't become, start with $1,000, get to the point in your life that you're worth billions because you're happy getting 5%. That's not it, folks. It's because he sees a storm a-brewing. We don't know if the clouds will clear and sun will come down and money will be made, but what he is preparing for is another, another, which is wild, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity because we had one in 2008 he took full advantage of. He thinks, I think he thinks, I think he thinks that there is another one that could possibly 
happen in the very near future. Because when you look at the storm clouds out there, they are a brewing. And I don't know how they're going to go with the battle in between China and the U.S. and all, of course, the Fed out there fighting the U.S. It's like everybody's trying to slow down the U.S. economy. And that's not good news because eventually somebody's going to succeed. And the team that's going to do it most likely is going to be the Fed. And if we do get a government shutdown or mandatory cuts in spending, that will affect GDP as well. And all of these could officially push us into, into that recession. And then equities would get slaughtered. But you know what wouldn't get slaughtered? Those sweet, sweet treasuries that old Uncle Warren Buffett has been loading up on. Once again, the, the Oracle of Omaha would look like just a genius because he is he knows what he's doing this isn't his first rodeo he knows he's been out there he's won the belt he got the buckle he's going to do it again and in my mind it's not a question of if he's going to be right it's when is he going to be right in other words when's it going to happen and everybody goes wow how did he know all this and that's what we're going to be talking about now folks if you want to follow along the live streams and see the portfolios and everything else, come on over to the StockMo Patreon. Link down below. I got the Stock Squad today. I'll be doing that private live stream down below for the Stock Squad. You can come on over and check that one out and join us because we've got Stocks with Josh and Eric, Keenan Grace, Larry Jones. It's going to be a great place all together. And, of course, uh, we got the free stocks from Moo Moo down below. Put $100 in the link right below, and you will get yourself up to, well, you're going to get five free stocks plus a free share of, of SoFi. So you get six stocks for that. And they can be worth up to $2,000 apiece, which is fantastic. The Weeble link is down there as well. $1 deposit, and we'll get you up to 12 stocks. 12 stocks. you got to use my links down below for this. But they can be worth up to $30,600 altogether. Folks, just get the free stocks. Take it. And they, some of these, like Moo Moo, they have a 5.1% interest on your money risk-free. You can just let it sit in there. So take advantage of this. Come back and thank me later. All right, folks, that's all I got for you now. I'll see you at the live stream. Let's get out there and make some money.